Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are marching to Zion, the beautiful city of God. We are marching for peace and justice in our world. Sisters and brothers in Christ, lift up your voices and praise the Lord. We are marching with joy and singing songs of praise. Praise the Lord. Please join in the opening hymn, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Welcome to our online worship service here at Athens First United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Robert McDowell. May the peace of Christ be with all of us as we worship together. Please join in the prayer of confession and words of assurance. O oh Lord, you have put a song of praise on our lips. You have blessed us abundantly, and we are grateful. When we grow weary along the journey and forget where you are leading us, your hymns of praise help us to continue moving closer to the destination you have in mind for us. Forgive us when we stray off course and neglect to lift our voices to you. Give us a new song of praise to offer to you this day and continue to guide us closer to the beautiful city of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. It's so glad to have you here for our Sunday service. Today, we're going to talk about helping others. What, now, right now, we're going through a time where there's the coronavirus going around, and I'm sure you've all heard about it, so we're not going to talk a lot, but, a lot about that, what that is, but it is a virus, and that means that other people can catch it from us. So we need to think about how we can help others to protect them and to protect ourselves. So, one of the best ways to protect each other is to wear a mask. And I see that most of you have masks on, Stormtrooper. You're right, you always wear your mask. That's true. Grouchy Ladybug, 
Yes, that we have a couple friends who don't have their mask on today. And that's okay. Sometimes we forget, everybody forgets, so it's okay, but we have to try to do our best to make sure we're wearing them. Another way we can protect ourselves and others, who knows what this picture is? You're right, it's somebody washing their hands. So that helps get the germs and things off our hands, so we need to wash our hands a lot during this time. What if you're not around a sink? What is the best way to get your hands clean and get those germs off of there? What's this picture of? Brutus, you're right. It is hand sanitizer. So if we can't be around a sink, we should have some of this with us so we can get the germs off our hands. Does anybody know one of the other ways we can protect each other? Nobody? That's okay. So, one of the things is called social distancing. Does anybody know what that means? Yes, Pink Panther, that's right. We try to stay away from other people by six feet. So we should make sure there's space between us. So two of our friends in this picture have space. You see the arrow between them? But there's one friend that's really close to another. Is that a good idea? And you're right, it's not a very good idea. We should make sure we keep space between us. So what are our ways? We should wear our mask. We should wash our hands. And what if we can't wash our hands? You're right, we use hand sanitizer. And we keep space between us and our friends. And this is a great way to connect, to, to protect our family, our friends, and our community. Do you think we can all remember that? I think you can too. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, help us in this time while we are experiencing the coronavirus and let us remember all the things we can do to help others. This is a way to show others that we love them and care about them. So please make sure that the word gets out that we need to be using these precautions so everybody can stay as safe and healthy as possible. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys. Our Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 8. I will be reading from the message translation. And then these messages from God of the Angel are a message from God of the Angel Armies. I am zealous for Zion. I care. I'm angry about Zion. I'm involved. God's message. I've come back to Zion. I've moved back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's new names will be Truth City and Mountain of God of the Angel Armies and Mount Holiness. A message from God of the Angel Armies. Old men and old women will come back to Jerusalem, sit on benches on the streets and spin tails, move about safely with their canes, a good city to grow old in. And boys and girls will fill the public parks, laughing and playing, a good city to grow up in. A message from God of the angel armies. Do the problems of returning and rebuilding by just a few survivors seem too much? But is anything too much for me, not if I have my say. A message from God of the angel armies. I'll collect my people from countries to the east and countries to the west. I'll bring them back and move them into Jerusalem. They'll be my people and I'll be their God. I'll stick with them and do right by them. Our psalm reading is Psalm 128. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children.
Peace be upon Israel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When our children were preschool age, we took them to Disney World in Florida. We were living in Northwest Ohio at the time. It was a two-day trip for us by car. Now, I had priv previously driven from the West Coast to the East Coast. That took me several days. But the trip from Ohio to Florida with two preschool children felt like it was twice as long as that cross-country trip. When we drove that year to Florida, the Disney movie Beauty and the Beast had just premiered in the movie theater. Before we left, Penny bought the cassette tape of the soundtrack for this movie, which we listened to for all of those hours during that incredible long car ride. To this day, whenever I hear music from that movie, I have these terrible flashbacks. So this might not be the best example of introducing our Psalm of the Week as part of our Summer of Psalms sermon series. Psalm 128 is known as a traveling psalm. It's a psalm that you sing during a long journey, not just to pass the time, 
but to also anticipate the destination to which you are going. And in the case of Psalm 128, as well as the other 13 Psalms of Ascent, that destination was the city of Jerusalem, also known as Zion. And the reason they would travel to Jerusalem was because that there, that was where the temple was located. The temple where animal sacrifices were made, where the sins of the people were atoned, and where the people worshipped together. Thousands and thousands of Jewish people from near and far would travel from their homes to the city of Jerusalem to celebrate three major religious festivals that were held during the spring, the summer, and the fall seasons. Like the city of Athens, when the students come back during move-in week, the population in Jerusalem increased significantly. Lodging was not easy to find because of all the people in this one city during these festivals. It reminds me ever so slightly of when in early June each year, 3,000 United Methodists representing the 1,000 United Methodist churches from all over the West Ohio Conference make a spiritual pilgrimage to Lakeside, Ohio, along Lake Erie for annual conference. Think of Lakeside as the city of Jerusalem and Hoover Auditorium, where our meetings are held, the temple. From Athens by car and stopping briefly one or two times along the way, it takes me about four hours to get there. And I looked it up, and if you would choose to walk the whole way to Lakeside from Athens, it would take just shy of three days. That is, if you don't make any stops along the way. When we think of Psalm 128, these 14 traveling psalms of ascent that we find in the book of Psalms, that image of walking several days from southeast Ohio, way north to Lake Erie, might help us to appreciate the commitment that it took to make this journey three times a year. Think of all of the effort and planning that would be required and no McDonald's along the way either. So we can see why these traveling psalms would be needed. They reminded those religious pilgrims of not only where they were heading, Zion, the beautiful city of God, but of who they were as God's people. So let's take a look at the lyrics of Psalm 128 and what the people would have sung along their long journey to Jerusalem. Verse 1 begins with a blessing on all of those who seek to follow God. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. And of course, they would have been walking during their uh, travel to the city of Jerusalem. These opening lyrics continue in verses 2 and 3 for followers of the Lord to enjoy the blessings of productivity in work and in their families. And appropriately, it concludes with the blessings of prosperity and for a long life. The last words of this traveling psalm are the words, Peace be upon Israel. So in this short traveling psalm of just six verses, those traveling pilgrims to Jerusalem would have reminded each other of the Lord's blessings and of the blessings they would receive upon their arrival in Zion, the city of God. That is so much better than listening to songs from Beauty and the Beast over and over again. Psalm 128 is a psalm of blessings it's a song of peace, blessings and peace, blessings and peace. Psalms of ascent are songs that remind us of God's goodness and love. They are the portable expressions of our faith. Our United Methodist heritage has a rich history of helping people who are far away from a church building to know and celebrate the good news of our faith in Jesus Christ. People knew us as those singing Methodists. And we have Charles Wesley, John's brother, to thank for that. 
Charles was the man. An Anglican priest like his brother Charles, Charles excelled as a musician and as a hymn writer. Of all of the hymns in our hymnal, Charles Wesley wins the prize for having the most hymns in our hymnal, 51 hymns in total. In his lifetime, Charles wrote 6,000 hymns. And just to think that we only have 51 of them in our hymnal, that would be a pretty large hymnal if we had all 6,000 of Charles Wesley's hymns. John Wesley was known as the preacher and Charles was known as the musician. That combination of preaching and singing was a powerful force that swept through not only England, but here in America in the early days of our nation. Before Charles Wesley's hymns were sung in churches, they were sung in taverns and out in the open fields. When those early Methodist circuit rider preachers rode on their horses to travel to the next little town out in the frontier, they were known to always have three things with them along their journey. The Bible, the book of discipline, and a hymnal. Singing was so important for those early Methodists that John Wesley offered seven directions for singing that we find at the beginning of our hymnal. You can read the, uh, the ones I'm going to share. You can read those at the beginning of the hymnal. Number one, first rule for singing. Learn these tunes before you learn any others. Afterwards, learn as many as you please. Now, why was this at the top of Wesley's list? Because those Methodists wanted every song to communicate the unconditional love and grace of Jesus Christ that was available for every single person. They didn't want to sing just any old hymn. Those hymns needed to emphasize God's grace for all people. Number two, sing them exactly as they are printed here without altering or mending them at all. And if you have learned to sing them otherwise, unlearn it as soon as you can. Number three, sing all. Sing so that you sing as frequently with a congregation as possible. Let not a slight degree of weakness or weariness hinder you. If it is a cross to you, take it up. You will find it a blessing. Number four, sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep, but lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of its being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. Number five, sing modestly. Do not fall so as to be heard above or distinct from the rest of the congregation that you may not destroy the harmony but strive to unite your voices together so as to make one clear, melodious sound. Number six, sing in time. Whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Do not run before nor stay behind it, but attend closely to the leading voices and move therewith as exactly as you can. And take care that you sing not too slowly. This drawling way naturally steals on all who are lazy and it is high time to drive it out from among us and sing all our tunes just as quick as we did it at first number seven above all sing spiritually have an eye to god in every word you sing aim at pleasing him more than yourself or any other creature in order to this attend strictly to the sense of what you sing and see that your heart is not carried away with the sound, but offered to God continually. So shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve of here and reward when he cometh in the clouds of heaven. Singing was so important to those early Methodists that they even had these rules on how to sing. Ours is a singing faith. And this is probably one of the most challenging things about COVID-19 and how it impacts our church. We are told that one of the main ways that this virus easily spreads is through tiny particles that are emitted from our mouths when we speak 
and especially when we sing. To not be able to sing together in person is for me the most difficult aspect in waiting for a vaccine. But we can at least sing silently from our hearts or out loud in our homes, or we can at least focus on the words that we are singing. Sometimes a hymn that was sung during worship returns at unexpected moments for us throughout the week. Sometimes a little phrase from a hymn that will leap out at me as I'm singing it, even though I had sung it many times. And all of us have been encouraged to sing for at least 20 seconds whenever we wash our hands to be certain that they are washed as thoroughly as possible. There was a Facebook meme that came out this past spring that suggested to sing the song I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. And it was just a fun way to remind us that we are going to get through this if we follow the guidelines. We have a singing faith even if that means singing from our hearts and paying attention to the lyrics. These hymns are here to remind us that God will see us through any challenge or adversity. One of my favorite stories of survival during the coronavirus quarantine was out of Italy when accomplished soloists and instrumentalists offered their incredible gift of music from their balcony for others to enjoy. They were professional musicians and they offered their gift. Music has a way of lifting our spirits and pointing us toward our common humanity. We too have a singing faith and the music reminds us of a God who is more than able to lift our spirits when we are feeling isolated or afraid or anxious about what the future holds. We talk a lot about thin place moments, those times when heaven and earth overlap in mysterious ways, pointing us to a God who is present in our everyday lives. I experienced one of these thin place moments on Monday, March 16th, this past spring. It was at the beginning of COVID-19. We were instructed to cancel our worship services the day before to help stop the spread of this virus. And I was feeling very anxious and afraid because I knew that there was a lot to think about in how our church was going to move forward with this new reality of social distancing. When I got home from the church that day, I noticed a package had come for me in the mail. I wondered what it was because I didn't remember ordering anything. I opened that package and my eyes lit up like a Christmas tree when I pulled out my brand new United Methodist music and worship planner for 2021. I had ordered this about a month earlier, but it finally came in the mail on that day. This is probably my most important resource when I plan out sermons, worship bulletins, and what hymns we will sing for the coming year. When I received that package, it was like God was reminding me to not just focus on the present reality which was causing me so much anxiety, but to also know that God was preparing us for a bright future in looking ahead to a new year. And it was like God was saying to me, there'll be a time when we'll be able to sing together again. And friends, that was just the little spark that I needed to feel some hope that a day will come when we can gather together again and sing together in worship. Like the Israelites who traveled those long miles to Jerusalem, we too are marching to Zion. And along the way, God has given us these songs of ascent, these traveling hymns that offer us hope and assurance that together or apart, we are still God's people. And when we finally reach our destination and are able to sing together, what a glorious day that will be. Let's sing our prayer hymn. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Let's sing those first three verses together.
I invite us to join our psalmist for today in this time of prayer. O Lord, we are getting tired and irritable along this long journey to Jerusalem. We can hardly wait to see everybody where we can worship together again in the temple. We started this journey last March, and we were hoping that by the end of July, we would have made it by now. We thought that we would be back in the church building, but we still have a long way to go. And so we join the psalmist in being reminded of what true happiness is. We don't experience happiness only when we arrive at the destination. We can find happiness when we are walking in your ways. Today, we especially pray for people who are in need of happiness today. You know how stressful this journey is on all of us as we wait for a vaccine. Our patience is wearing thin. We are scared. We are tired. Help us to not focus so much on how long it will be to get to where we're headed, but upon how you are present with us along the journey. As we worship remotely, you are present in each of our homes as we watch this service. You are with us every step of this journey as we keep our focus on you remind us that this is a time where you are calling each one of us to plant seeds that will one day bear fruit may the seeds that we are planting now whether it be a new hobby a creative way of being in ministry or deepening relationships in our own homes may this time of planting Fill each one of us with happiness. For those who are feeling like these seeds that are being planted will never bear fruit. Or that our strength will not be enough. Or that a world of so much injustice and inequality is too slow to change. Remind us every single day that you are offering us your blessings that lead to a peace that is not based on our circumstances, but upon your gracious leading. Bless us even now with your peace as we pray together the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's sing the last verse of our prayer hymn. Welcome again to today's online worship service here at Athens First United Methodist Church. Again, I am Pastor Robert McDowell. Linda Fife has served as our worship leader in this service. We thank Linda for sharing with us. Jeff Dobbenmeyer is our pianist and organist offering us his gift of music. We're thankful for them being part of our service today. 
Just a reminder that we have postponed the August reopening of our building due to guidance from our county health department. We will continue to offer our worship services online. Please continue to join with us every Sunday. In addition to our online worship services, you can also keep updated with our church through social media. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We provide news on those sites throughout the week. For next Sunday's online worship service, we will be focusing on Psalm 17, which is known as a Psalm of Protection. Join us at a time of your choosing next Sunday. Also, for our worship service next Sunday, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Please have bread and grape juice available there in your home, and we will share in the sacrament together. Even though our church building is closed, several of our ministries continue, like Monday lunch, offering curbside meals. Our missions team, who will be providing a meal for good works, our Growing Tree Preschool staff getting ready to open in early September. Several needed repairs and improvements to our church building. Online worship recordings like this one with our new sanctuary camera. All of this is made possible thanks to your continued generous and faithful financial support. Gifts can be set up through our online giving link as well as checks through the mail. Our worship leader, Linda Fife, will now offer a prayer of dedication over all of our gifts being given to Christ and his church this week. Let us pray. God, thank you for your grace and mercy for this community of faith and for the gifts of our lives. Bless these offerings this week that they might be used to further your good work. Work through each of us and through the ministries of this congregation that we might glorify you in all we do. Amen. Please join in the closing hymn, Marching to Zion.
March to Zion, may we know that God is blessing us along our journey. Let's share in this prayer of blessing our benediction. You are a blessed, beloved, and beautiful child of God. There are no exceptions, asterisks, or loopholes. As we leave from this place today, may we continue to bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in all of us generous friends. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.